Geometry page 1114, before you try to do the checkup on page 15 and 16, <coughs> excuse me, let me just talk about uh, the diagram that you see to the far right on page um, 16. And uh, I just want to kind of show you a couple tips about that before you start, okay? And then um, I also want you to look ahead to the... Um, to the self-test, okay, and on page 46, wow, look at that interesting uh, diagram there, okay, on uh, top of page 46, and um, on the checkup, the second checkup on page 28, uh, the dot bottom of page 28, that uh, looks pretty complex, okay? So that's kind of where we're headed. So we need to understand where all of these little pieces of the puzzle are coming from. And so this is an important one that we're going to talk about right here on the, before you do this checkup. <coughs> so we talked about in, in an earlier video, just a reminder that when we have a quadrilateral embedded in a circle, inscribed we call it, do you remember what angle A and angle C, what their relationship is, okay? They're called supplementary angles, so they're going to add up to a certain number of degrees, okay? Now, in one of them, it, uh, I think one of the questions that has a diagram like this, and says BC is a diameter of the circle, and what would the measure of angle A or B, BAC be, okay? BAC. Now, you're not supposed to use your, um, your protractor to measure these angles, okay? That's, you're not supposed to do that at all. So they give you enough clues. It's like a puzzle. You've got to find the missing pieces. So what I find helpful is to, on scrap paper, redraw the diagram and only draw angle BAC. And if this is a diameter, then notice what is happening with BAC, okay? And actually, if you notice, anywhere you draw a triangle that is inscribed and goes from this B to this C, this angle and this angle and this angle will all be the same, okay? And I think you can figure out what that would be, all right? You should know that from one of your theorems and corollaries in this section that you just finished. But again, the thing I'm pointing out is that... Um, drawing it separately. Otherwise, it looks like it's just embedded in this mass of lines and it can be confusing. Now, let's talk about um, if this arc right here, arc from A to B is 65 degrees, how many degrees would angle C? Okay, right here. And remember we talked about that in the previous video, and this is one of your corollaries, is that this angle is going to be exactly half of the intercepted arc, okay? So we need to memorize some of these and be able to use them throughout the pace, on the self-test, the pace test, and uh, there's a handful of them, okay? And sometimes when they're embedded in the middle of a diagram like this, it's a little different than the way they did it earlier in the pace, and it might look a little confusing at first. So if you were sketch it out first and say, ah, I see the relationship there, it's gonna be half. Now, here's another thing. Sometimes the answer that you get is a decimal number, and that is what's going to happen here, because obviously if you take 65 and you cut it in half, it's going to be a decimal number, okay? And that's fine. All right, I'm going to stop there. I would suggest that you look over the checkup carefully before, and notice where all the math problems are coming from and the procedures, okay, before you have your supervisor initial it and you start doing it, because I want you to do well on this checkup. And then the next section has a lot of challenging things as well before we get to uh, the middle of the pace.